AI isn't just about new tech. Hey everybody, it's Post Edit V here, and I lost all of my audio. So, what better way to rectify that than using AI? So, enjoy. It's about power capital, and obviously the fairness in our new era. Did you know that AI errors disproportionately harm marginalized communities? Or that AI can be misused to justify controversial actions, like weapon deployment? These are the issues that Sarah Myers West are bringing up alongside her peers. They pose a very big question. Why are we creating AI? If it's only going to reinforce existing problems, well, the answer to that question gets really complicated. Really fast. Let's be clear. AI is everywhere. From your Netflix recs, all the way to your eerily targeted ads on Instagram and TikTok. AI is running just about everything that we interact with online. It's running the show, if you will. But I have to ask, who is running AI? Spoiler alert, it's a bunch of tech bros. And they don't really wear hoodies at all. Well, for now, take a moment just to consider this. Representative Rokana brought an array of prominent academics to Capitol Hill earlier this year to discuss artificial intelligence, specifically about the legislation they hope to craft. The lawmaker called this move a corrective move against big tech companies, which is a little bit ironic, considering a new report found that most of those people in attendance were actually those that had ties to big tech. To say it was a corrective move seems not very genuine. Is this not a conflict of interest? Those who make the stuff get to legislate the stuff. Where's the community and user input here? A watchdog group did say that these findings raise questions about the reach of the tech sector's influence and the debate in Washington about artificial intelligence in general. That's why I want to take a moment to look at Sarah Myers West today. And if you don't know her name, that's okay. She's not a big tech company owner like Sam Altman. So it makes sense that you don't know who she is. Sarah Myers West is a managing director at AI Now Institute. She recently gave an interview to TechCrunch regarding her effort. Her work focuses on the social implications of AI and the concentration of power within the tech companies. You could say that she's been on the front lines from the US Federal Trade Commission to global policy forums. She keeps questioning what exactly are we heading towards? She describes it as a tech-driven dystopia. She did see firsthand how tech companies can really put a blemish on things. She witnessed as tech companies show up around the world that claim to change the political landscape in Southeast Asia, China, the Middle East and elsewhere. She even wrote a book about big tech companies and their promises to these countries that never materialized. Back to Sarah West, who I think is focused more on the heart of the matter. Those that have hearts, she's putting into question the philosophy behind exponential growth, especially as it pertains to this field. The answer has little to do with tech itself and a lot to do with public policy and commercialization. As I said at the top, AI disproportionately harms marginalized communities. Studies show that AI in healthcare, for instance, can misdiagnose diseases more frequently in minority populations, or that AI can be used to justify some pretty shady things. All technology is dual use. Like Google CEO Eric Schmidt says he predicts AI. Data centers will be on military bases, surrounded by machine guns. His quote does continue. All of these inventions can be misused. And it's important for the investors to be honest about that. They know, they're fully aware. Just last year, a giant group of tech leaders from Anthropic OpenAI, Google, um, you name it. They all warned about the threats that AI poses to society. In that meeting last year, they did mention that AI systems could pose a threat to humanity. And it could be deadlier than pandemics and a nuclear weapon itself. Here's a statement from the nonprofit Center for AI Safety. And it reads, quote, Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside societal scale risks such as pandemics and a nuclear war. So I wasn't exactly parsing words here. Circling back to beginning of this video, should we only allow the biggest influencers in technology? The big tech companies run this AI show. What's the chief concern? We know that this air-prone technology is just that. It is air-prone. And we know from independent research that these errors are not distributed equally. Say what you want. 
I know that AI is dope. It's here to stay. And I will continue to cover it as positively as I can. Because I can see a positive application for AI. There is such thing as a more equitable approach to AI in our everyday lives. I think that's true. Aside from better recommendations in your Netflix algo, there's more applications and there are better ways. The idea that AI can perpetuate inequality or, you know, justify some sort of horrific thing. Like the weaponization of mass destruction in other countries is really an awful thing. But there's hope and there's inspiration when we look at leaders. Like Sarah West and her colleagues, we should begin to question the th things as they are and as they're presented to us. On this channel, I talk a lot about technology and new media because they're married, both in power, both in capital and in reach. Right. I do want to leave you, the human watching this video with this. Why are we creating AI? It's a pretty big question with many answers. I'm not sure that your answer to that question is the same as those big tech companies. But we should lead with the mission and vision, first and foremost, as we're building a new future. Am I nuts? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And if you like this video, go and like it. Do it. I bet you won't subscribe to the channel. I bet you won't follow for more videos like this. If you're into tech, new media, and of course the development of AI. Until next time, bye.